Hi. How you doing, everybody? Okay, I got my first question. So exciting. Um, Shelly Mead asked, how long did it take you to write The Best Man? And um, it took me about six months from the um, initial idea. And then I spent a, about a month or six weeks outlining and, and writing notes about characters and trying to understand why my characters would do the things that I want them to do. I make a big outline and uh, and then I start writing the first draft, um, which is for me the most painful part of, of writing. I hate writing the first draft. When you're writing just ideas, everything can change, so that's fun. And then when you've got the whole book down, you can fix things and, and spruce things up, so that's fun. But um, it takes me about maybe three months, four months to write the first draft, and then another month to clean it up, maybe. Uh, hi, Andrew. Um, so, okay, about six months to write an entire book. And, um, and then uh, C.R. Shore asked, which book was your first bestseller, and how did you find out it had become a bestseller? Um, my first book to be a bestseller, I think, was Too Good to Be True, and it was a BookScan bestseller. Then um, All I Ever Wanted hit USA Today and as a bestseller, and then my one and only was my first New York Times bestseller, um, which is, you know, those titles are a great thrill to have. So um, my agent usually calls me and says, you know, Kristen, this is, you know, New York Times bestselling author Kristen Higgins, and she'll give me the ranking and stuff, and then she forwards me the list, and then my editors will call. So it's really exciting. This is my fifth book to hit the New York Times list, and um, it never gets old, so it's, it's always a thrill. Uh, Teresa Reading said, um, did you always want to write romance? Have you thought about other genres? No, I didn't always want to write romance. I, I never really thought I would try it until I actually did sit down to try when I was I'm 36 years old, I think. Um, my son was three, so yeah, I was 36. And, um, but I was a copywriter for an advertising agency before that, so I always wrote, but, and I always read romance. And then I had my kids and I wanted to be a stay-at-home mommy, so I thought maybe I could write one. You know, I know what I love to read, and I know what's out there, and I know what's not out there, so maybe I can I can write a romance. So I sat down and gave it a try, and um, three years later, that book came out. Darlene wants to know, I was wondering if you had experiences like your character in The Best Man, and if not, where did your inspiration for the story stem from? That's a great question. I know what you're talking about, Darlene. It's the bathroom scene, am I right? It's when my heroine has an interesting encounter in the bathroom. Um, no, that's never happened to me, although I've certainly had wardrobe malfunctions, um, you know, by the dozen. And, um, you know, those that Spanx-like garment that she was wearing, yeah, I've wrestled with those, absolutely. Um, but no, I haven't had, I don't base the books on my experiences, although little bits and pieces from my own life are generally always in there. Um, I've had, um, you know, little, I've had bad dates, I've had funny friend encounters, um, I've, I've had little snippets of conversation that might pop up here and there in the, in the, uh, books, but generally they're all fiction, you know, based on events, maybe. Uh, Emily Ann Lewis says, what book would you want to take a weekend vacation in? I'd probably say The Best Man right now because, you know, I'm still in that honeymoon phase with the book. And I love that area. It's set in the Finger Lakes of New York. And that's such a gorgeous area um, uh, of our country. It's maybe an hour from Niagara Falls. And the Finger Lakes are these long, skinny lakes. And... Um, there's beautiful farmland and foliage, and it's like the best of the Northeast with the best of the farming um, sensibility of the U.S. So it's just a gorgeous area. If you can ever get out there, definitely do. Uh, Beach Bum Reads. Hi, Kristen. I love your smile. Oh, thank you. I'm sure I would love yours if I was looking at you. Um, what's the hardest part of writing a novel? That's a great question. I mean, it really depends on the novel, but I think for me, the the hardest part is coming up with that idea that's gonna go the distance because 
there's a lot of ideas that you could work with, you know, and everybody has a great story. And since I write realistic romances, you know, anybody could be a character in my book. Anybody's life story could could inspire me. But the the tricky part is to find the right one and flesh it out enough, which is what I'm doing right now for the third book of the Blue Heron series. I finished the second one, which is um, called The Perfect Match, and that comes out this fall. It's the story of Honor, who is Faith's older sister. Um, J.A. Ged Otter says, I'm from New York. I love that you included upstate New York. Yeah, it's just, I, I think I'm a New Yorker at heart. I grew up in Connecticut. I live in Connecticut, but someday I want to live in the Empire State. Um, Liz asked, who would you want to play your main characters if the book were made into a movie? Um, you know, I always like to have a hero, um, a face for a hero. So I like to have some guy that I look at, and you guys may might know from Facebook if you follow me there. Um, I have a lot of celebrity crushes, and the, my celebrity crush for Levi was Jeremy Renner, who just, I don't know, he just has something really powerful about him. I love his face. And so I start off with, you know, 112 pictures of Jeremy Renner on my hard drive. And then as I get further and further into the book, the character starts to look more like Levi, you know, my hero, and less like the the celebrity crush who inspired him. But I think Jeremy Renner would be a great Levi. And as for Faith, um, I don't know, maybe, um, that was that pretty redheaded actor, um, Jessica Chastain, who's so great. Um, and she's got like that beautiful girl next door face. So, uh, and the right coloring. So maybe those two. Um, C.R. Shore said, do you ever get any heat for being gay friendly in your writing? I think it's fantastic, but I wonder if you ever had to defend yourself about this subject. Um, I do have a lot of gay characters in my books, um, and I never really thought about it. No, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that question, so it's a great question. Um, no, no one's ever given me a hard time about the gay characters. Um, in fact, nobody really ever gives me a hard time about the books except for one thing, and that is, um, I take the Lord's name in vain. Um, I'll say, oh my God, or something like that, which I have to be honest, I didn't know was offensive to, um, you know, to people in certain demographics. Um, you know, I'm a Yankee. We swear a lot up here. <laughs> and, um, and so that occasionally I'll get a, a letter about that saying, you know, I really wish you wouldn't do that. And um, generally my books don't have as many um, curse words as a lot of contemporary novels do. But, um, but as for the gay aspect, no, I never have. I have gay friends. I think everybody does. Um, my parents were very liberal. So it's just a very natural part of life. It's like including a dog. You know, I, I love dogs. Um, I have, I have female friends and male friends and gay friends and straight friends. So everybody makes it into the book eventually. Um, Mackenzie said, do you ever read your reviews? I, I try not to. Um, I don't go onto Amazon anymore. I did when I was new and, uh, I heard other authors say, oh, I never read my reviews. And I thought, yeah, sure. Right. But uh, but you, you get to the point where you don't, because what happens is, I mean, the good reviews make you feel great, but um, the reviews that are bad, when somebody doesn't like something, it kind of gets stuck in your head, and you think, oh, yeah, but that, that one person didn't like my sense of humor, and, and so you have that little voice in your ear. Um, I do get sent reviews a lot. I, you know, I'll get the publisher's weekly reviews, Kirkus, um, you know, some of the bloggers will send me the links to their reviews. Um, generally, the reviews have been really good for this book. I did get a really harsh review from one uh, magazine, I, Romantic Times, um, and they just didn't like my sense of humor, as far as I could tell. So, what are you going to do? You know, it's the only one I have, so I can't really edit myself. So, I try not to read my reviews, um, although I do read every fan letter and email and Facebook posting that I get and I respond to all of those myself because even if you didn't like the book I really appreciate that you felt strongly enough to take the time to write to me so um, if you've ever sent me an email I hope that you've gotten a note back from me. Our next question is from Connie Schultz. 
Have you written with mixed genres like a romance and a thriller? Not yet. Not yet. Um, I love writing romance for now. Um, I, I, it hasn't gotten old. I've only got, this is my 10th book, so I've only got 10 books out. Um, maybe if I become, you know, like Susan Mallory or Nora Roberts, and I've written so many that I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, I might switch genres. Um, but um, I really love that that realistic romance that I'm writing right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I'll keep writing that as long as I can. I could see writing a a mystery maybe or a thriller. Um, I don't know if I'm clever enough to, you know, those plots are so convoluted and complicated and, and ingenious. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. Um, I've only been writing for 10 years, so, um, you know, life is long. Maybe I will, I'll try something else, but not for the foreseeable future. Marina Buffaleno said, what genre of books do you enjoy reading? I read everything except nonfiction. Um, I, I just read Gone Girl, which is that wonderful thriller that's um, been so popular for my book club. And um, I read some literary fiction. I read women's fiction. I read a lot of romance, of course. I love, um, I love horror. I read Stephen King and Dean Coons. But mostly I, I read female authors. Um, with the occasional guy thrown in. I don't really discriminate against guys as authors, but I, um, I'm more drawn to the subject matter that women write about. And I don't read um, the really realistic, sad stories like um, Jodi Picot or something like that, you know, the ripped from the headline stories, because those are just a little too close to reality and the grimmer part of it, so I shy away from those. I really like books that... Um, engross me and make me feel good and happy um, or just that are so intriguing and, and um, different that I'm really transported out of my daily life by that book. Okay, Teresa says, I'll be honest, I've got some of your books in my TBR pile, but I haven't read any. <laughs> oh no! Which book should I start with? <clears throat> you can start with any one. My first six books were in first person. Um, and my last four have been with both the hero and heroine's point of view. Um, there's um, the only series is the is the best man, and that's the first book in the series. But somebody to love does refer to characters from another book, although it's not like a series. I wouldn't say um, there. It's just a secondary character that you might remember from another book. Um, Mrs. Connie Assam says, who does your book covers? Don't, are they great? My book covers are so beautiful. The Harlequin Art Department does those. They work in Toronto. They work with the marketing team. And it's a really wonderfully collaborative effort. The way a book cover evolves is they, uh, the publisher asks me for input on what my characters look like, what some of the scenery might look like, maybe some pivotal moments. Um, you know, that would make a good visual. And then they ask what kind of dog I have in the book or cat. So I tell them, you know, for example, okay, Faith has red hair and she dresses in kind of retro 50s clothing. And Levi looks like this and the dog is a golden retriever and it's set on a vineyard. So they come up with that idea. They send me a concept. I'll say, oh, that looks great, except that, you know, she wouldn't wear that type of clothing or that's the wrong kind of dog, something like that. And then they give me um, an updated version and I might tweak it, say like, oh, you know, maybe you could make the font a different color or something. They're very tolerant with me. Um, I, I don't think a lot of authors in general get too much say on their book covers, but um, they've been really good to me. And I think maybe because I worked in advertising, uh, they give me a little bit a little bit more say, but they've been really wonderful and I'm so happy with the book covers. This one in particular is so cheerful and cute and I just love that smiling golden retriever. Um, <clears throat> Audrey Curley says, are you currently working on a new book and can you give us a little insight on the storyline? Yes, I just passed in last night <laughs> at about eight o'clock. I just passed in the revisions for The Perfect Match, which is Honor's story. Honor's the older sister in The Best Man. And um, I really love this book. Um, it was really interesting to set it up a little bit in The Best Man and give a little hint of what's to come. So I, I really also like that within a family, you know how it is where 
you know, the younger sister looks at the older sister and says, oh, you've got it made, you know, you're perfect and no one ever bugs you. And then the older sister looks at the younger sister and says like, oh, you're the baby of the family. You have no idea what it's like to be me. So that was really fun to explore um, that dynamic and how you're seen versus how you see yourself. So I think you'll really like Honor's Story. It's one of my favorite books that I've written, so I'm excited for it to come out. And then, um, because I finished last night, um, today I'm starting on the third book in the Blue Heron series. And um, without saying too much about that, because it's still very much evolving, that's Colleen's story. So I hope you guys will like that. Um, Sherry Humphrey says, Catch of the Day was amazing because Malone was such a quiet man. There's a very small amount of Malone dialogue in the book, <laughs> yet the reader feels she really knows who Malone is. You managed to communicate a fleshed out character with him speaking only about 30 words. Um, was that difficult? Did you decide to do that? How difficult was it? You know, I, um, I didn't really, I think he speaks maybe more than 30, <laughs> but I loved the idea of a guy who's hard to read. And so here's Maggie, and she's so chatty and outgoing, and she's everybody's best friend, and she tells everyone everything. And here's Malone, who's definitely the strong, silent type that we chicks love. And he uh, he was just so wonderful and, and you know, a little bit um, private and, and maybe um, not very expressive outwardly. I loved the idea that everything you learn about Malone is largely through his actions and not what he says. And that's a sticking point for me when I'm a, a reader. I like guys to sound the way they do in real life. You know, these guys who spout these beautiful poetic paragraphs that sound like something Dr. Phil would say, they're wonderful, but, um, but maybe they're not so realistic. So I wanted an alpha male who was a real alpha male. Hi, my daughter's home from school. Hi, honey. Hi, how are you? Um, sorry. Gotta, gotta say hi to my babies. So, um, Otessa says, thank you. I'll pick one up as soon as I can. Thank you, Teresa. Um, Karen Terry asked, what made you start writing romance? Uh, I, I just loved it. You know, I, I've been a romance reader since I was 13 years old. I stole my grandmother's um, paperback of Shanna by Kathleen Woody Wiss, a classic. And I just loved that book. I read it. I read romance all through high school all through college. I was an English major, so there I was, you know, reading Dickens and, and Thomas Hardy and Shakespeare, and then going to my romance novels when I had a break. So I I really loved those kind of books because they they follow a character through this very important journey that, that so many of us have been on or want to go on. And um, and I just think they're really life affirming and and joyful and hopeful books. So I never really thought of writing another kind. C.R. Shore says, you interact with your fans on Facebook more than any author. I know we appreciate it. Uh, do you set aside specific times of the day for it or is something you do as time permits? It's both, actually. Um, uh, you're welcome, and it's my pleasure. It really is such an honor when people are so interested in your books that they want to hear about your life, too. So. I really feel privileged to be able to do it. And I'm so happy that social media exists like this because it's so easy for us to interact with you guys. Um, I, I always check my Facebook first thing in the morning. Sometimes I'll set something up, you know, I'll say like, oh, that's a great picture. I'll have to post that on Facebook sometimes. So I, I have a file of it. And, um, you know, and, and then um, I know you guys love my kids. My kids are very funny, wonderful kids. So I, I try to put things up about them. Um, especially my son, who's at a delicate age. He's 14, and um, and these days he's like, oh, that's that's going on Facebook, isn't it? And I'll say, that's right. <laughs> they love you on Facebook. Um, and you know, I put up little things about about my life. You know, if I if I go to a, my boxing class, it's always good for a laugh or two because I'm the most uncoordinated person in the world, except for maybe Jill Shalvis. Tell her I said that. <laughs> um, S.J. Bowen says, you mentioned Nora Roberts. How does an author write so many books so rapidly? Do they use researchers or ghostwriters? You know, I don't, I don't know about Nora having a researcher, but I know she writes all her books herself. 
Um, she has a tremendous work ethic and she really knows what she's doing. You know, uh, she's been writing since I was a teenager. So, um, you know, that's 30 years. So I, I think she puts out five or six books a year and she just, um, she says, you know, writers write, they sit down and they do it. And, uh, some people are blessed with being faster and some of us take longer. Um, yeah, I think you get faster as you get more familiar with, with your own strengths and weaknesses and you're not maybe as crippled by terror and doubt as you were a few years ago. That's been the case for me. I think like, oh, I'm not feeling it on this book. But that's been true for several books, so I'm not as worried as I used to get. Um, although every book I write, I think, oh, it's not very good. This one, they're, you know, they're not going to like this one. Um, but I work, you know, I work a lot on it. So I think, um, you know, that doubt really helps me personally. For someone like Nora, maybe there's less doubt because she's just been doing it so much longer and um, at such a rate that she, she really is in the groove. Uh, another question from Emily Ann Lewis. Do you enjoy having your book on blog tour? Yeah, I really do. I really do. Um, I have help. Um, the people from Book Trib help me put together blog tours. So um, they arrange all these uh, sites for my, my interviews to go to and stuff. But yeah, I really do like to, um, to be out there. And I love hearing the different questions that people ask and the things that they liked about the books. Um, that maybe sometimes there's something in a book that that I won't have paid too much attention to and people will say like oh I loved this part you know I loved I loved Lorena she's just like my great aunt Maggie or something and and um, and I love hearing those things so you know the more exposure the better and and um, we writers are insecure <laughs> so we really love to hear from you guys especially when it's the things that you liked uh, Nikki Johnson Davis says, where do you get your inspiration? Um, I just did a talk in Australia, actually, a couple of weeks ago, and this was one of the questions that they asked, and I knew it was going to be asked, so I had a big slide for it in my PowerPoint presentation, and I had all the pictures of my, my man crushes, my celebrity crushes. Um, I love, I, I, I love falling in love, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with my husband, but I, I'm not falling anymore, I'm just sort of standing, you know. And uh, we've been married for 21 years. And so um, what romance writing does for me is it lets me fall in love twice a year. And I really have to do that, I feel, in order to convey the kind of emotion that I want my books to convey. So I really do kind of get smitten with my heroes. So a celebrity crush is always good. And it could be anybody, you know. Um, and, uh, and then I love... <laughs> I love eavesdropping. That's my other source of inspiration. I love listening to people and the way they talk to each other. I'm always eavesdropping in restaurants or the elevator on a train. And um, I love hearing people's stories, you know, how they met, what happened to them. The Best Man was based on a story that one of my college friends told me um, about a person who didn't know he was gay and, um, you know, was in a relationship with a woman. And, and how that worked out. And I said, oh, that, you know, that's just such a poignant story. I have to use it. <laughs> so eavesdropping and beautiful men. <laughs> okay, Beach Bum Reed says, if you were stuck on an island, did you ask another island question? If you were stuck on an island with an unlimited supply of three items, <laughs> what would those three items be? Um, Hershey nuggets with almonds. <laughs> um an unlimited supply of downloadable books and um, hmm, my other thing I don't know I should probably say something smart like water but um, how about puppies instead <laughs> keep me company <laughs> keep me entertained while I'm on the island J.A. Um, says oh J.A.G. I'm sorry Jagged Otter or Jagged Otter says what is your writing routine um, I write when my kids are in school. I have an office um, at my neighbor's house above her garage and um, and I go over there and it's great because I don't have Wi-Fi there so I'm not distracted by the internet because you know how it is. You go to look up something and then half an hour later you're still online. So I, I try to write fiction when my kids are in school and then when they come home I, I get them from school, go to their after school things and um, and then I might do something like blogs or, or something like this book chat. Um, I blog a lot and um, 
and uh, I mentor a lot so I do that in the in the afternoon and evening and um, that's sort of the other half of my job is is once you write the book to put it out there and to have that public presence hi Anne Anne Thayer Cohen is a great friend of mine and and many authors she says did you know this last book was going to be part of a series so happy thank you Anne I'm glad you're happy I did set out to write a series um, for this I, I I know readers love them so I wanted to do it and you know I work really hard to get the town feeling um, it's a real joy to me to create a, a fictional town that feels so real a lot of my readers will say I wish I could live there and um, and I feel the same way you know I'd love to live in Gideon's Code or or Georgebury Vermont or or uh, Mackerley Rhode Island you know all these little towns that are based on real places so I thought you know it's a lot of work to do that I travel to the town I spent a couple days there and I thought it'd be nice to stay. You know, you do all this work to create it. Your readers love it. Why not stay for a little while? So um, I did know it was going to be a series. I didn't know um, who the key players in the series would be. I knew the first book would be about Faith. Faith has two single siblings and one married sibling. She has a single friend. And um, and I really didn't know who was going to get a book. You know, there's there's a whole slew of potential people. I mean, I, maybe I could be the next Robin Carr and and keep mining that same community um, the way Robin did with Virgin River. And everyone is so happy because it's like you go back to your friends when you go back to another Virgin River book. But for now, I think I'm just going to stick with three and kind of see how it goes and how I feel when I'm done with this third one. Sherry says, Levi was like Malone in the way of showing himself through actions with the crime scene analysis and the action spoke loudly to the heroine. Yes, I know. I loved that scene. Um, and he is definitely like another one of those alpha men who is not great at verbalizing his emotions. And um, he, he feels a lot and he does a lot, but he's not so good at saying a lot. And um, even there's a scene at the end, um, the ice wine scene, Sherry, where I love the way he, he, says what he needs to say there too because it's very straightforward and um, and it's not very poetic maybe and it's not very effusive but it covers the necessary bases. Shore says I know you posted about it on the jaunty quills but can you recount your water rescue for everyone? You made it sound both funny and scary. <laughs> you know that is a great story. I was um, in Australia with my sainted husband um, we went down for a couple book events, and um, my, The Best Man was released in Australia as well as in America, which has never happened before. And I was a speaker at the Australian Romance Readers Conference, which was wonderful. So <clears throat> we decided we would have to go snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef, because who knows if we'll ever get to Australia again. Having been there, I want to go again this summer, you know. It's so wonderful. But I'm not a very good swimmer. I mean, I'm not a terrible swimmer, but I'm not a great swimmer. And I was sort of kicked off the boat by the very cheerful crew. In you go, darling. You know, good on you. And they, they kind of push you into the water. And there we were <clears throat> in 30 feet of beautiful crystal water. But it was very choppy seas. And long story short, I swallowed some water. <laughs> Didn't handle it that well. The rescue launch was deployed. <laughs> My husband um, is a rescue swimmer as part of his duties as a firefighter, so good man to have around, especially if you're me, um, and all's well that ends well. But if you did want to read about it, um, you can go to www.jauntyquills.com, and uh, the blog was up yesterday, and the, it will stay up there for a while. You can just click older um, and read about the dramatics. <laughs> Always exciting to have me around getting into some kind of medical emergency. Karen Terry says, do you believe in happy endings and do all your books have happy endings? I do believe in happy endings um, and all my books do to a certain extent. Um, you know, they're romance novels and I think the promise of a romance novel is that these two characters will overcome all those obstacles that have prevented them from getting that perfect relationship, not perfect relationship, but that, that person who's perfect for them. Um, so, you know, they've never had that before or they haven't been able to sustain it. And, and a 
romance novel promises you that they're going to this time. They will overcome those odds and those difficulties and those emotional burdens that they've carried. So my books, um, my romances will, but what I don't always do is I don't always wrap things up with a bow. So maybe not everything turns out perfectly, wonderfully, sparkly, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I can think of like in just one of the guys, <clears throat> there's another couple in that story who doesn't um, end up together. And it's the right ending for those two, but, um, you know, it's not tied up with a bow. And in my one and only, um, the heroine has some unresolved issues from her past that stay unresolved. Uh, because, again, I try to write realistically, so um, not everything gets all... Um, all sparkly unicorn wonderfulness um, but you know in all I think you close the book and you say oh that was great I feel good or at least I hope you do uh, Teresa reading says as a reader and now a writer of romance do you think the genre has changed over the years yes absolutely I think it's changed and and definitely for the better I think um, romance novels have gotten smarter I think the characters have gotten smarter. I think the emphasis is a lot less on how beautiful you are and um, and much more about how big your heart is, how how smart you are. Um, it used to be, you know, back when I was a teenager, a lot of heroines being rescued and heroes loving them because they had emerald eyes or sapphire eyes or opal eyes. <laughs> Probably not opal, but, um, uh, you know, they they were loved because of their beauty and now they're loved because of their heart and I think that's a really wonderful thing and both the hero and heroine have to overcome something they're not perfect people um, who who have these encounters so I think it's changed in a wonderful way um, and I just think that when you have writers like Eloisa James and Sarah McLean and Julie James and Jill Shalvis and Robin Carr you are getting a level of emotional depth and and just um, overall intelligence that, um, you know, Eloisa James is a professor of Shakespeare. Her books are, are riddled with uh, metaphors and, and literary devices and, and literary references that make reading them a real joy. And, um, you know, that cliche of who reads romance has certainly changed. Um, I think, you know, all women read romance now. Um, it's not that that cliched answer I heard recently um, one author say you know oh it's housewives eating bonbons who read romance novels and one of the romance authors in the audience stood up and said excuse me and really put the smack down on him and it was wonderful my cat is attacking me excuse me while I squirt him <laughs> with the squirt bottle do they always have handy okay Rhonda Laney hello Rhonda says what is your favorite book um, my favorite book changes from from year to year, week to week. I would say um, it's probably my my usual answer is Gone with the Wind, because what a book that is, you know. I mean, it's an incredible story of uh, this really strong, memorable character, Scarlett O'Hara. It's a love story. It's a story of survival. It's a lesson in history, and it's so beautifully written that. You, know, you can't go wrong with Gone with the Wind. And then my other favorite book these days is um, To Kill a Mockingbird, which I reread recently and just thought, oh my gosh, what a fantastic story. What a joyful, wonderful story that is. Um, and it has Atticus Finch in it, you know. <laughs> oh, sigh. Savvy Bookworm says, out of all your characters, who was the most fun to write? Prudence. Uh, Prudence from The Best Man is definitely so much fun. She's the oldest of the Holland kids. She's um, my age, as a matter of fact, 47. And um, and she's been married for a long time and she has a grown son and an almost grown daughter. And I really loved her. She has no filter. She's trying to keep her marriage fresh and she is, um, but she's not a clown. You know, she's got real heart and she's a good sister and she's a good mother and uh, a really funny person. I really enjoyed writing her. I also enjoyed writing uh, Beverly from My One and Only and Lavinia from Somebody to Love. Those are some characters who stick out. Um, the, the women, the quirky women are often really fun for me to write because you can kind of go on a tear with them whereas you might have to 
make your main character a little more um, mainstream. Emily Ann Lewis says, who is your first book boyfriend? Rhett Butler ruined me for all other men until I was 25 and met my husband. <laughs> Rhett Butler, you know, come on, it's just not fair. He ruined us all. Prairie Dawn says, um, here you just got back from Australia. You've mentioned you like Nutella. I do. What do you think of Vegemite? <laughs> I did try Vegemite. Um, I was warned about Vegemite. You know, they say if you're American, you go down and they say, oh, you want to try Vegemite? It's best if you have a whole spoonful all at once. So I, I knew not to do that. Made some toast, put a lot of butter on it, spread the Vegemite on there. And um, it wasn't bad. It was strange. It tasted like um, someone had boiled beer down to a spread. So <laughs> it was kind of strange, but it wasn't terrible. I don't know if it has any nutritional value or if you just put it on like Nutella. Uh, the hotel we were staying at had Nutella and Vegemite and I was definitely on the Nutella side of things. Jeffrey Trenton, hi, says, did any one author or book inspire you to start writing? Um, I don't think so, Jeffrey. That's a good question, though. I think um, one of the reasons I started writing was because I really wanted to read the kind of book that I was having a hard time finding. So I started writing 10 years ago. That was kind of in the height of the vampire, Navy SEAL, billionaire craze. I mean, those, those, those are tropes that romance writers, I mean, romance readers love. They're never going to go away. But it was hard to find normal people romance, as I call them. And I thought, you know, where are the books about people like me, my sister, my friend, my sister-in-law? you know, the people who are like us, who who should deserve a really wonderful, exciting, memorable love story, um, but who have those regular issues that we all face. We have work and family and, and pets and bills and all that stuff. So I wanted a story that was realistic, but also really wonderful and memorable too. So um, maybe it was the books that weren't out there at the moment that inspired me to start writing. I sounded very deep saying that. I didn't mean to. Um, okay, Beach Bum Reads says, any comments or advice for aspiring writers? Yes, I do have some advice. Um, read a lot. It's always a smart thing to do. And uh, read in the genre that you would like to write in so you know what's out there and why certain authors are doing so well and what chord they're striking with readers. And um, be really ruthless with yourself, you know. Be a great writer. Don't try to write a book that's as good as somebody's. Write a book that's better. And uh, and be yourself because it's going to come out eventually that, you know, you're not the next Nora Roberts or Robin Carr, that you're you. And uh, and they've got those bases covered. So be yourself and, uh, and don't stop trying. Ms. Otter says, how do you choose your characters' names? Oh, that's really tough, actually. I have about five websites that I go to. Um, I go to the Social Security Administration and try to get like the year my character is born and I'll look at the top 500 names there. Um, that's one way. I go to the baby names website and I'll say like if, I, if you like the name Sam you also might like these names you know because I've used a lot of my favorite names already. I have 25 cousins and they have children so I steal their names occasionally. And, um, and then sometimes I ask my readers, um, lately it's been really hard to name my male characters. So I asked on Facebook the other day, like, please help me. I still don't have a name. And I got something like 600 suggestions. So I should be good for a while. And Thayer Cohen says, I loved that Faith wasn't the perfect looking woman. The conversations between siblings had me smiling. You took me right to the Finger Lakes. Yes, another area I visited. You made me want to go back there. Did you have a favorite wine? after visiting there. Yeah, you know, um, thank you, Anne. And I loved that Faith was normal too. You know, she certainly got um, her appealing physical traits and she has her physical traits that aren't so appealing. So I enjoyed writing her because um, she's like the rest of us, you know. Um, and I love writing siblings. You know, I have, I have an older brother and a younger sister and the three of us are really close. And I always love you know, going there. And I love when my siblings read my books and, and enjoy them or recognize something that they've said. Um, as for my favorite wine in the Finger Lakes, I really loved the ice wine. And that's, um, that's a really neat thing. They wait till the grapes freeze. I think it's 17 degrees. The temperature has to drop to 17 degrees. 
and they pick the grapes frozen and then they squeeze them and so it's very concentrated and sweet um, because of the freezing and they make wine out of that so it's a lovely dessert wine and I urge you all to try it. Ms. Shore says, when, do you, when you do signings or readings, do you sign ebook covers if we don't have paper copies of your books? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, that's the electronic signature I think you're talking about, and um, I, I think I have one of those, so yeah, bring it over. Sherry says, how much input does your editor have? I heard you once say your editor had requested no more brothers-in-law. <laughs> oh yeah, so you must have been in uh, Australia, Sherry. Um, or does your editor pretty much leave you alone because you're a bestseller? Or maybe you use him or her as a sounding board? Um, all of the above. Um, I definitely use them as sounding boards. Um, they do trust my instincts by now. Um, not necessarily because I'm a bestseller, I think, but because of well, maybe because of the reader response, which might translate into bestsellers. But um, they're really wonderful with me. Um, they they definitely give me a lot of room to play around. I have done um, two heroes who are the heroine's brother-in-law. Uh, one was married to her sister and then divorced, and one was her late husband's brother. So, um, you know, for those books, I think they worked really well, and certainly that's an obstacle for them to overcome is that previous relationship. But, you know, you can only do that so many times. I've done it twice. I think I'm done. Um, Liz says, what were your favorite books as a child or your favorite books to read to your children? Oh, my gosh. I love, as, as a kid, I loved Dr. Seuss. I read all of Dr. Seuss's books. I loved the Black Stallion series. Um, I loved a book called Mandy by Julie Andrews. Um, I read that thing like 27 times. I loved the Little House on the Prairie books. I, I read everything, you know. And then the books I love to read to my kids, you know, we, we started reading to our daughter the day she came home from the hospital. And, you know, we stopped a couple years ago because the kids are 17 and 14 now. So, But I read all the Harry Potter books and, and everything out loud <laughs> with all the voices. Um, I loved... Uh, all the quirky little picture books, like William Kennedy books. I loved um, the Good Night Moon and uh, Margaret Wise Brown books. Cowboy Small by Lois Lenski. Um, you know, we, we would always leave the library with a big canvas bag filled with books, and we'd go a couple times a week. I think reading to your kids is the best thing you can do as a parent. So. Um, Perry Dawn says, have you ever written one of your dogs into one of your books? Yes, I have. My first dog um, as an adult was Digger, and he is the dog in my first book, uh, also named Digger. Um, he was uh, my great writing buddy. Uh, he died a couple years ago, and um, and so he, he is Millie's dog. Then... Um, Colonel was based on a wonderful dog we had. Um, after my dad died, I got my mom a golden retriever, and um, and he was just the most wonderful, sensitive dog. And so Colonel is based on our Brendan. And then um, Willow is um, Beauty in Somebody to Love My Dog Willow, very shy, sweet little dog who's afraid of, of people until she loves you. And um, And that's about it, I guess. Uh, I haven't done any other of my own pets. I've done a, a cat. Um, Fat Mikey was based on my cat, Cinnamon. So. Let's see. Rhonda Laney says, do you read reviews that bloggers, Amazon, Goodreads? Um, I, I answered this earlier, Rhonda, but not really. I don't seek them out. Um, and um, so I think my, my brother might. He's he's very into the um, my career. He's very tickled and... Uh, and he does all my numbers, you know, he'll be like, you're number two at Amazon or something like that. I try to ignore that stuff because once you put it out there, you're done. You've done your best. Um, you know, you've written the absolute best book that you could. There is no churning them out or cranking them out or, you know, I mean, they're formulaic in the sense, like in, in my books, there's going to be a pet. There's going to be some sadness. There's going to be some laughs and there's going to be a happy ending. But it doesn't make them easy to write because of that. So when I've finally done and the book finally goes out, I almost feel like pulling the covers over my head, <laughs> you know, because it's it's done, it's there, and um, and I hope people like it, but if they don't, I don't have any control over that. So I don't really look for them. 
Uh, Ms. Shore says, I love how your books generally have happy endings, but your heroines definitely experience heartache. How have your experiences influenced those heartache moments? Well, you know, I think everybody has those sad, wrenching times in their lives, and, and I'm, no, I'm no different, you know. Um, I've, I've had heartbreak romantically. Um, my dad died very young. Um, you know, I've, I've had sorrows with children and, and uh, illness and things like that. So I think that what we writers try to do is um, recall not those specific events, but the emotions that they brought up in us. Um, so in The Best Man, you know, Faith's mom dies in a car accident, and that's how my father died. And so there's definitely a chunk of my heart in that book. Um, it's not a, the similar circumstance, but, um, you know, the, the overall event was the same. So I think that our what we strive to do as a writer is to um, to recall those emotions through our fingertips and, and share that with the reader. I think that um, those are some of the, the moments that I love best about my books are those heartache moments. And um, I love to write them. It's very um, emotional for me. I usually cry when I write a book and, um, and I usually laugh too. Uh, it, it makes me look a little schizophrenic, you know, so once my daughter came upon me and I was writing a really sad scene and she said, what's the matter, mommy? I said, no, it's good. It's all good. Because <laughs> I knew it would be a really good scene. Traumatize the child, but you know, got to do what you got to do. Um, Liz says, do you believe in getting writer's block? What do you do about it? You know, um, my writer's block is not so much that I can't produce pages. It's that I feel I can't produce good pages. So I'll write 10 pages and then I'll go back the next day and look at them and say, what was I thinking? You know, and I'll delete them all. Um, so I think for me, writer's block is just feeling like I'm not really tapped in to the character and their feelings and their experiences. So what I do about it is I think. I do a lot of staring at my screen and I sit there with my my hands on the keyboard because I don't seem to be able to think without my hands on the keyboard and um, and and I just think and I type different scenarios and I say well like why would why would Faith do this what what would make her say something like that or how can I screw them up a little bit more so um, I think that's the only way I can deal with writer's block I never really go through periods where I can't write anything so mm -hmm. far never say never right um, Emily Ann says, what is your vice? Oh, so many, Emily Ann. I love trashy television. I love um, all the reality shows. Uh, I, I watch uh, Project Runway, America's Next Top Model, The Jersey Housewives. Don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> I, I love trashy TV. Um, I love um, movie popcorn. I think I'm actually physically addicted to movie popcorn. I get the silo, you know, I don't want to share it with anybody and I can eat the whole thing. Um, and, uh, I don't know, other vices. I'm pretty wholesome overall. Let's see. Mrs. B Mrs. San says, maybe you have already answered this. Do you write your notes or what, on whatever is near? Use a computer right away, an old typewriter. I write um, on the computer, but I, I almost always have my computer with me. I travel with it. It's like my, my security blanket or something. Um, sometimes I'll call myself and say, don't forget, you know, Faith is going to do this when, you know, and uh, so I have some weird messages on my machine. And now I have a smartphone, so that's a blessing. I, um, I can type in some notes there or have my husband type in some notes. Angie says, I read a few different books at a time, depending on my mood. So do you have several projects at a time? Yeah, you know, I do, um, but never. I'm never writing two books at the same time. I'm revising a book, writing a book, and promoting a book, usually at the same time. So like right now, I'm working on three. I'm promoting The Best Man, so I'm doing blogs related to that, and some publicity, some talks. And then uh, just finished revising The Perfect Match, and writing untitled, <laughs> which is the title of my third Blue Heron book. Uh, Mackenzie says, what was your favorite thing to do while in Australia? That was eat. <laughs> my god, the food is so good down there. Um, eat, watch the men. The men are beautiful. Um, I, I took some, some pictures, as some of my Facebook friends can attest. Um, I loved swimming at Bondi, although I mentioned that I'm not a great swimmer. Um, 
I, I had such an exhilarating time at Bondi Beach because the water was so clear. It wasn't cold. It was just cool and refreshing and immaculate. And the waves were so big. So I was screaming with joy and terror, looking for sharks, as I always do, and asking everyone around me if they would save me, <laughs> just in case. Like, you know, my husband's going to take a picture. Can you, will you save me? We keep an eye on me. Don't let me drown. Don't let a shark eat me. So um, it was fun. And the lifeguards were curious about me. Who is that American talking to everyone and screaming? Um, let's see. Oh, looks like there's only a few minutes. Um, I will announce some winners in a few minutes. But Alice Steele says, sorry if this is a repeat question. I wondered if you were a plotter or a pantser. I'm both. I think every writer is a plotter and a pantser. Even the pantsers, you know, they have some scenes that they're going to definitely include in the book. And we plotters, we have scenes that we have no idea where they came from. We just suddenly are writing them. So those are always the best scenes, I think, when you think, oh, wait a minute, I know what's going to happen, and you just start clicking away. I think that's always thrilling, and um, those are like moments of grace or something, when your subconscious finally spews up the thing that you were looking for and you weren't really aware that you were looking for it. So definitely both. Oh, my image on my computer just changed. I see that I'm a hand talker. Connie Schultz says, do you prefer to write with a computer or your pen and paper? You know, I definitely prefer the computer and I do have some friends who write longhand which dazzles me because I can hardly write a thank you note without my hand cramping up. Um, I, I definitely prefer to type and I can type so quickly um, that it just makes a lot more sense for me to do that. Ms. Shore says, once you became a successful writer, what was your first frivolous and well-deserved purchase? Um, you know, my first advance, we used to pave our driveway. I know, really sexy. Um, and our second, uh, my second, I think we put toward a new car, but we really needed that, so it wasn't frivolous. I think, you know what I do? I, I do have a frivolous thing. I buy a pair of shoes with every advance that I get. Um, and I have like commemorative shoes. So they're, my shoes are very frivolous. I have purple suede booties and, and shoes with flowers on them and leopard and, and you know ridiculous high heels and like turquoise blue shoes. So I, I am living the cliche in that respect. Right now I have bunny slippers on just for the record. Uh, Shelly Mead says, what was the last movie you saw? Do you have any favorite book to movie stories? Um, the last movie I saw was I Give It a Year, and we saw it when we were in Australia, and I thought it was really delightful and fun. Um, my favorite book-to-movie stories, oh, The Hunger Games. I really loved, I thought that the movie did an excellent job adapting that. Whoops, there we go. Um, <laughs> someone says, ah, Vegemite is a required taste that I don't have, but Nutella I do love. Have you tried Tim Tams? And have you tried the Tim Tam Slam Challenge? Um, I have tried Tim Tams. I got a little addicted to them down there. Those are a filled cookie. Um, they're sort of like the Oreo of Australia, maybe. And um, they come in, I don't know, 17 different flavors. But the Tim Tam Slam, I believe you, um, coffee and Tim Tam in the same gulp. I did not get to try that. I, I needed a tutor for that. Teresa's reading says, commemorative shoes are awesome. Would love to see them. I should have run to my closet and bring you one. Uh, Passion for Fiction says, what are you, some of your hobbies? Do you spend a lot of time hanging out with your children? Yes, I do. I really love my kids. I'm definitely a mother first and an author second. Um, and I, I enjoy my kids. They're very funny. Um, they're delightful. They're really responsible and smart and joyful. I just, you know... That was my number one goal in life was to be a mom. And uh, I'm just so happy that I got to do it with the two kids that God sent us. So um, we, we do hang out a lot. We goof around a lot. Um, I love to tease my son, as you know, from Facebook. My daughter is um, an angel. For those of you who have teenage daughters, I hope you, you get one just like mine. Um, and we do a lot. We go to the movies. Um, we, we go to baseball games. Um, I and I do the enforced hike every once in a while, the death march they call them. <laughs> you know, time to get some exercise. Savvy Bookworm says, "Do you have any funny writing quirks?" Um, 
Yeah, I'm sort of OCD about having a song that I can write to. So I try to find a song for each book. So for The Best Man, it was a Coldplay song called Us Against the World. I, I heard that song. I thought, oh my gosh, I love this song. And it just spoke to me. I have no idea what it's really about. But in my mind, it's about Faith and Levi. And, um, and so I put it on repeat. And I just listened to it at very low volume constantly for months. <laughs> So it's been played on my computer something like 800 times and on my iPod another 800. Um, so that's that's definitely a little weird and would bother anyone. I talk to myself when I write and for the first <laughs> the first kiss scenes I, I practice on my hand. I've tried practicing on my husband. <laughs> it doesn't work so well. <laughs> I don't know. So I make out with my hand. I shouldn't have said that in public but you know, filter is not so good with me. Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's time to announce the official winners of the best man, CRS Shore, or CR Shore, Miss Shore, Beach Bum Reads, Teresa's Reading, and Darlene Isagir. Isagir. Sorry if I mispronounced that. And, and they are Cohen. That's so nice. So thank you guys for joining me. That was really great. I don't know. Do we have an, uh, time for one more question? Oh, there's more books. How exciting. Audrey Curley, Sherry Humphreys, Emily Ann Lewis, S.J. Bone, and Rhonda Laney. Very good. Yay! And I think Booktrib will tell you how to, uh, how to get those copies. Thank you, Booktrib, for a great chat. And thank you for everybody for, for, for submitting your questions. Um, oh, and here's the information about how to get your winners. And uh, thank you guys so much. It was so nice of you to spend an hour with me. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Shelly Mead. And I was. Oh, yes. So you see you on Facebook. Do pop over to my Facebook page if you want to keep in touch. Book Trib says, "Thank you so much for joining us. We loved getting to know you. Thank you, Book Trib, for having me. It was really great and very easy. I was very nervous and sweaty before this, but you guys made it easy." All right. Thank you, guys. Time for me to go. Take care.